do something. So we will go to the passage of the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Most High. Glory to the Most High. Glory to the Most High. We are going to do something today. I got the red pen in here. I'm going to do something. We're going to do something that will make faith. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you have been where animals are being killed? Have you been to a place where they kill animals? Chicken. Chicken. No. You've been to the slaughterhouse? How many of you have seen animals killed while they are being killed? You have? Yes. Okay, let's be very honest now. How many of you have killed an animal by yourself? says if you don't kill the animal and pour out the blood don't eat it if animal dies by itself for example you come out in the morning and you see the chicken is dead no more life the bible says don't eat it bury it before you will kill any animal it must be alive and healthy you cut the neck and the blood pours out and you bury the blood okay you must do it respectfully all right that's actually what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So today I'm going to talk about that blood that you see. When you are killing the chicken, you realize that the chicken is not happy. Is the chicken happy? No. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you put the knife on the neck of the chicken, it starts to shout. Right? It starts to scream. Screaming for its life. The chicken is screaming because the chicken knows something wrong is about to happen. But then when you put the blood, you notice one thing, the blood is warm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The blood touches you, you notice the blood is warm. Okay? It's warm. It is a sign that the chicken is alive. Blood will be warm. And it will be flowing fine. It's a sign that the chicken is healthy. Warm blood, flowing fine. And then this blood, when it's pouring out, of course, if you're already used to killing chicken, you don't care. Right? But if it is your first time, you are scared. When you see the red blood flow out, it touches you. Right? I know a friend that after being wet chicken and animals were killed, he couldn't eat meat for some time. He felt so sorry on how these animals were being butchered. He felt it. He couldn't eat meat for some time until again he recovered. So there are some people, if they go to abattoirs, they will no more eat meat. It's amazing. Why? They feel sorry for the animal. So when you see the blood being poured out, something should strike you. Something must touch you. You see, in our world today, we are being kind of, you know, trained. Let me use the word, being trained. The movies and the things that are happening are training our minds not to see blood as anything anymore. Not to care about life anymore. So when you hear, oh, 100 people died somewhere. Oh, 100 people. That's where it ends. It does not move you anymore. When you hear that, oh, in your barangay, oh, there was eight people, 15 people died. You came back in Okay? It doesn't move you anymore. It, it, 
it just ends there. It's just one of the news. It's just one of those news, that thing that happened. It doesn't move you anymore. Somehow, the serenity of life has been taken out. In fact, as I'm talking to you right now, animals have better right to life than human beings in our world right now. Animals have got better right to life than human beings. If you go around the world, if you just look at international news, and you see people dying here and there, and it's no more news, it's nothing. It's nothing. It doesn't move anybody anymore. Something is wrong. Because the sacredness of life and blood is no more important. But there is something about blood that each time you see blood, it touches you. Even your own blood. Each time you see it, it moves you. It touches you. You know this is the unction of life. Yeah. You know this is a container of life. You don't let it just flow anyhow. When you are calm, you quickly find something to stop the blood flow, right? Yeah. You press it. You find clean cloth or clean tissue and cover it and hold it tight so that it will stop bleeding. Why? You know this is life. You will not just let it flow away. So I want to tell you about the blood of the Messiah. You see, there is something about the blood of the Messiah that is so powerful. So powerful that every time you think about it, you can't just help but yield. The blood of the Messiah is so, so powerful. Can you imagine a blood that was poured out over 2,000 years ago? And yet, that sacrifice is still potent and active. Souls are still being saved. Sicknesses are still being healed. Miracles are still happening. Hearts are still running to the most high because of that sacrifice of blood poured out over 2,000 years ago. More than 2,000 years ago. It's different from the blood of the animals. Of course, we know that the sacrifice of Passover started with animals, right? It started with goats and sheep, or ram rather, because it must be a male. So from the sheep family, you got a ram. From goat family, there's a male goat. So it must be a male animal. And this animal was killed. And that night that that animal was killed, the Bible said Israel was set free that night. That night. In all the miracles that Moses was doing, nothing changed in Egypt. Pharaoh did not care. Think about it. The water of Egypt was turned to red. For a couple of days, it did not turn the heart of Pharaoh. All the animals of Egyptians were dying. It didn't turn him. There was boil all over everybody. People were smelling, having sores all over them. It did not move Pharaoh. There was frogs. Frogs came up, filled the land. It did not move Pharaoh. Locusts came and ate up every green leaf in the whole of Egypt. It did not move Pharaoh. There was three good days of blackout. Blackout. People could not know the difference between day and night. The Bible says it was thick darkness that you can touch. Thick darkness that you could feel. It did not move Pharaoh. The staff of Pharaoh's magicians turned into slaves, and Aaron's rod swallowed them and did not return it back. Remember? That Aaron's rod that became a snake swallowed all the other rods and did not return it back. Aaron took away their staff of authority. He did not move Pharaoh. Can you imagine this? All these did not move Pharaoh. All these unimaginable acts of wonder did not move Pharaoh. 
But that night, Moses said, take a lamb, kill it that night, put the blood on your doorpost. And that night that that blood was shed, that was game over. As long as those animals have died, then judgment must come upon the house of Pharaoh and all his gods. That same night that those animals were killed, all the firstborn children of Egypt died. That same night. Can you imagine that? Blood for blood. That same night that the people of Israel cut off the neck of their goats and ram and put the blood on their doorposts. The Bible says that same night. That same night. God did not wait for another day. God did not have to wait for another week. That same night, all the firstborn sons of Egypt died, including firstborn children of animals. Everything that had blood in it was affected. Everything that has blood in it paid the price. Blood for blood. Somebody say blood for blood. Blood for blood. Blood for blood. The most high immediately acted and Pharaoh that same night the Bible says he couldn't sleep he came out and he said call Moses and when Moses came he said please go take everything you want to take and Moses says well we're not just going to go like that anymore people have been walking and they have not been paid we have been working for over 180 years without payment. Over 180 years without payment. And he said, no problem, whatever you want, say it. I want my people to go in and get whatever they can get from their masters. No problem. So the people of each Israel went in and started to say, can, get me some gold. Uh, in fact, add silver in it. Put bronze. Uh, hey, everything that is metal, pure metal, please bring it. Uh, get me all your apparels. If you don't have gold, get me your clothes. All those expensive wrappers. Bring it. Isn't that amazing? And the Bible says, whatever they ask for, they got. Why? Blood. Blood. I want you to understand what is acting, what is working, is blood. If you have ever been involved in sacrificial acts, or some of you that were into idol worship, I know that many, many places in the Philippines they do idol worship. They kill the animal, they pour the blood and all that. You know, if that very deity is potent, once the blood is poured out, statements are made, everybody believes it. And everybody acts on it. Everybody simply goes out doing whatever, whoever is acting, as the priest said. Isn't that amazing? And sometimes they work. Sometimes they work. That's the truth. Sometimes they are very potent. They work. We gotta be honest. Why? Because it's a teraphim. This is the difference between ordinary idol and an idol that has got power. Some idols are just ordinary wood and they can't do nothing. You can go and pick it up and go. You can do anything with it. But some idols, you can't do that. You may behave somehow, it will knock you down. It will even kill you. Why? It's a teraphim. It's a teraphim because there is a fallen angel representing them. It's called by the name of a fallen spirit. There is a spirit acting on behalf of that very tree or a sculpture. So if you behave anyhow, it will knock you out. The spirit will act. Isn't that amazing? But why is the spirit active? Blood. Blood. The spirit is active because of blood. 
The idol is active because of blood. Everything that is happening in terms of sacrifice happens because of what? Blood. So I have a question for you. Do you understand what the blood of Jesus represents? Hmm. I want you to do something today in faith. And that's why I'm talking about this. The blood is powerful. Blood represents life. And each time you pour out the blood, you are asking for something greater than just what money can buy. Each time the blood is remembered and acted on, you are seeking for something beyond just the natural things. That's why the blood of the sacrifice of the Lamb of God is mighty. It is so mighty that heaven's response to it. Do you remember how Jesus was crucified? He died in between heaven and earth. You must understand that. He died in between heaven and earth. The Bible says he was hung on a tree. On a beam. So he was crucified. Hanging in between the sky and the earth. So his blood not only speaks to the earth. It also speaks to the heavens. His blood speaks to the heavens and speaks to the earth. Isn't that amazing? All the other sacrifices you have speak to the earth. But this one speaks to heavens and speaks to the earth. Powerful. Number two, the only righteous blood ever to be shed. One, it is not the seed of man. So there is no imputed sin. There is no inborn sin. Purity to the highest of its order. It is a sacrifice that speaks at any time, anywhere, irrespective of the condition. This sacrifice speaks. Every time that people offer sacrifice, they move with a different mindset. What is the mindset? I have paid the price. Atonement. I have paid the price. The mindset of liberty, freedom. I have paid the price. That is a mindset that people will definitely have once they offer sacrifice. Once you kill that animal that you are told to bring, and once it is killed and the blood is poured out, your mindset is, I have paid the price. Atonement! I'm free! Of course, we're going into season of atonement after Yom Teruah. paid the price. This is why Jesus had to say on the cross, I have paid the price. It is finished. That's why that statement, the price is paid. So now, I'm going to ask you, have you any sacrifice that you have done? Yeah, you're looking at me with surprise. <laughs> Did you do a sacrifice? You have the sacrifice of Jesus is your sacrifice. It is yours. That sacrifice is your sacrifice. Remember, the Bible says he did not die for himself. No, he did not die for himself. The Bible says he that knew no sin was made sin for his people. He died for us. Even when the angel came to Maria, he said, you shall call his name Emmanuel, for he shall save his people from their sins. If you go to the book of Psalm, you know, David was saying, blessed is the man whose sins are covered, whose iniquities are forgiven. 
So I want you to know that you have a sacrifice that you have presented before the Most High. And that is the sacrifice of the Messiah. You killed him. Oh yeah, because he died for you. I killed him because he died for me. But I want you to see the positive side of it. It is a sacrifice that speaks to God on your behalf. So at certain points in your life, when there is nothing else you can do, you must begin to shout the blood. At certain times when you have prayed and prayed, and there is nothing more to say, begin to declare the blood. I plead the blood. I plead, I declare the blood of Jesus. The importance is that you are reminding heavens and the earth that you have paid the price. There is a sacrifice speaking for you. And when the blood is seen, every force responds. Why do you have to plead it? Why do you have to speak it? Because everything that you speak, you give life to it. Everything that you say, you empower it. This is why we say, be careful what you say with your mouth. Because whatever you say, you empower to be active. You give life to it to manifest. The power of word is the power that activates. So when you say things, you activate things. So even though you are feeling somehow, say, I am well in Jesus' name. You are activating wellness over what you are feeling. It does not mean that you don't recognize that you have issue. You do. But you are speaking a different thing to activate a better thing what you would have. So this is why you have to plead the blood. Declare the blood intentionally. I declare the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Over my life, I plead the blood. Look, you can spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour doing so. Somebody will say, oh, don't disturb the blood of Jesus. It's already been... No, 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 no. The person does not understand. You are activating that same blood that was poured out 2,000 years ago to speak for you now. Now. That's what you are doing. Are you with me? Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? And so now, we are going to make that same declaration over our lives. We are going to declare that the blood of Passover is for us. It is my sacrifice. You will say, Father, I come with the sacrifice of the blood of Passover, the blood of your only begotten son, the blood of Jesus the Christ, Yahusha Mashiach. He is my sacrifice. I come with that same blood before you today. And I come presenting my family that this blood will speak for my family that this blood will speak for my life this blood will speak for my business this blood will speak for my people this blood will speak for my assembly this blood will speak for my ministry this blood will speak for my children this blood will speak for my barangay for my people i want you to do that but do that in faith that is why i explained that once people have given a sacrifice they move with an assurance that I have paid the price. That is the faith. The faith is that they have a mindset that they have paid the cost. And they are not going to be thinking that the powers of darkness or whatever can hold them anymore. Why? They have, in their mindset, I have paid the cost. I have paid the price. Do you understand what I mean? Do you understand what I mean? Yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I know in Philippines when people are sickly, you offer sacrifice for them, right? Okay, after you offer that sacrifice, there is a belief that the price for that person to leave has been paid. There's a belief. No, nobody thinks, okay, the person may die. No, everybody believes the person is gonna live because why? Chicken has been killed. Goat has been killed. Blood has been given. It is life for life. Life for life. Blood for blood. And so it is the same way. The blood of Jesus is for your life. It is his blood for your blood. His life for your life. He died so that you live. It is life for life. The same thing. Exactly the same thing. And I want you to have that mindset that it is blood given for you. It is your life. 
for the life of the Messiah. That's exactly what it is. So I don't want you to be scared whether you will live or you will die. I don't want you to be scared whether your sickness will go or it will not go. I don't want you to be scared whether your miracle will come or it will not come. That is where doubt comes in. That is where faithlessness comes in. If the people that worship idols will have so much faith in the blood of a goat, in the blood of a chicken, how much more you that sacrificed a human being in the person of Jesus Christ? Which one is more expensive? A sacrifice of chicken blood and a sacrifice of human blood, which one is more expensive? Of course. This is how you must think. And this is how I think. If I am faced with any spirit that comes around, I will say, look, I have the sacrifice of human being. And you cannot do me nothing. It does not matter. You, they give you chicken, they give you goat, they give you cow. My own is a human being. And my own is stronger. Do you get the mindset? Why? It is blood for blood. You must understand what is going on. Blood for blood. That's what is going on. So in the old covenant, Moses will say to them, when you come to the priest, when the priest kills your animal, the priest will take the blood of the animal that you brought and put it on your tongue and your big toe. And sometimes on your forehead. Why? It is the blood of that animal for your blood. You get the idea? That's what is going on. So the, 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 the most I says to Moses, put the blood of this animal on the lintel of the door of your post. Right? Put it at the door. What does the door signify? Your body. The entrance of your body. Your body is the house, the temple of God, right? Yeah. So put the blood on the house. The same way the blood of Jesus is on you. That's why when you walk up there, some people will see you, they know you are different. Why? They see the blood. They see the blood. Because when the devil see, they see the blood. Oh, this one is different. Give this one. <laughs> Have you remember the testimony of some people that were kidnapped for sacrifice? And when they got to where they will be killed for sacrifice, the priest looks at them and rejects them. The priest that should kill them for sacrifice will look at them and say, no, no, take this one out. This one, don't touch him. Take him to wherever you brought him. Take him there. The priest is seeing something else. The reason why you have some of you have come face to face with some mighty spirits, but they couldn't do you anything. It's because they see the blood. The blood symbolizes ownership. The blood symbolizes that you are owned by a higher power. So when they see you, they won't do you anything. There are some of you that have come face to face with powers, but they couldn't do you nothing. Why? There is blood. The blood of the Messiah is on you. That sacrifice is your sacrifice. But we always give in to the powers of the devil because we don't remember these things. We are not mindful of it. It is a spiritual law. You must be mindful of it and make use of the power attached to it. And these devils will no more afflict you anyhow. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you ready to pray now? Please stand with me. We're going to pray. Our prayer is going to make some demand. We're going to make some demand. Because the blood is important. Therefore, we're going to make some demand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
that night that the blood was shed was called the night of Passover. The people of Israel passed from one situation of life to another. But our first prayer is going to be, Father, I come. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. I want you to go ahead and begin to thank him for the blood of Jesus. Go ahead and thank him. Thank you for the blood of Passover. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Yahushua Mashiach. Thank you for our blood of sacrifice, the blood that is poured out for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Oh, we come with the blood. We come with the blood. The blood of Yahushua Mashiach, Jesus. We come with the blood of Jesus. We come with the blood of Jesus. We come with the blood of Jesus. We come, we come, we come with the blood of Jesus. We come with the blood of liberation. We come with the blood of atonement. For blessed is the man whose sins are covered, whose iniquities are washed. My Father, we come with the blood. We come with the blood of Jesus. That blood that speaks for eternity. We come with this blood. This blood that breaks yours. This blood that destroys chains. We come with the blood. It is the price for our life. We come with the worthy price for our life. Not the blood of an animal. Not the blood of a bird. Not the blood of a beast. But the blood of Yahusha Mashiach. The blood of the Son of Yahuwah. The blood that is the purest of ever existed in all the universe the purest blood that ever existed we come with this blood the blood of the lamb of Mosad. we come with the blood and we bleed the blood i declare the blood over my head i declare the blood over my life i declare the blood over my existence my destiny i declare this blood over my children i declare the blood over every single one of them over my whole family i declare the blood over my siblings and their families. I declare the blood over my people. I declare the blood over the assembly of transformation. I declare the blood over transformation assembly. Over transformation assembly. Over transformation assembly. I declare the blood of Jesus over their bodies, over their health. I declare the blood of Jesus over their being, over their soul. I declare the blood of Jesus that cleanses the conscience. I declare the blood of Jesus that iniquity. I declare the blood of Jesus that brings restoration to purity. I declare the blood of Jesus that breaks the power of evil. I declare the blood of Jesus that clears every guilt and sets your people free. I declare the blood that pays the price. Jesus says it is finished. It is finished. This is the perfect price. The perfect cost for our lives. I declare the blood. I declare the blood, I declare the blood over our destinies, I declare the blood over our destinies, I declare the blood in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Next we are going to say against any altar that speaks against us, we plead the blood of Jesus to that altar. Upon that altar we come with the blood of Jesus and we shatter that altar with the blood of Jesus. Let's begin to pray in Jesus name. Father in the mighty name of Jesus, Yahushua Mashiach. Whether that altar is in the Philippines, is, is in Nigeria, is in Ghana, is, is in Kotonou, is, is in Gabon, is, is in America, whether that altar is in Hong Kong, China, whether that altar is in Myanmar, Cambodia, wherever that altar is, whether that altar is in Europe, wherever that altar is that is speaking against us, I plead the blood of Jesus against that altar. I bring the blood of Jesus against that altar. Let the power of the Holy Spirit begin to against that altar by the blood of Jesus, by the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. Let that altar be broken. Let that altar be shattered. Let that altar be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Every altar speaking against our health. Every altar speaking against our destiny. Every altar, whether that altar is in Thailand, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come with the blood of Jesus and I smash that altar. I decree that Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more. We are going to pray. And we say, my body, my mind, I pray that the blood of Jesus worship, washes, washes, wash, wash my imagination and make my body clean so that I become a clean temple for the most high. Let's pray that prayer. Father, my body and my mind, I apply the blood. I plead the blood over my body and my mind. Wash me clean to become a clean temple before you. Yes, my father, wash me clean to become a clean temple. Wash my imaginations. Wash my mind in the mighty name of Jesus that I become a clean temple. Thank you for visitation of angels because now we are clean by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for visitation of angels. Thank you for visitation of angels. Angels that shall direct our work, direct our business, direct our activity, direct the health of our bodies, direct our activity in the fellowship, direct Skill. The people of Israel moved from one situation to another. They moved from slavery to liberty. That night, they moved from incarceration to freedom. They moved from poverty to wealth. They moved from not knowing who they are to now becoming a people with a great identity. Some of you here, you lost your identity. You don't know who you are and what you are. In fact, you have no connection with your parents, with your origin. But today, by the blood of Jesus, you can restore that. There are certain things going wrong in the family. By the blood of Jesus, if in your family you have a record, a history of some things that are wrong, you are going to pray today. You will say, Father, by the blood of Jesus, I move my family and I move myself from this record history that is not good into your own provision. If it is slavery, I move from slavery to liberty. If it is curses, I move from curses to blessings. If it is sicknesses that go from generation to generation, we move from this sickness to well-being, to health. If it is poverty, we move from poverty to abundance. Hey, you are going to declare by the blood of Jesus. I move from every circle of disappointment to great appointments by favor. Come on, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. By the power in the blood of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus. We are moving. We are moving. Ah, according to the act that happened on the day of Passover. The Bible says, after the blood was shed, by the people of Israel, they moved from they moved from slavery to liberty. They moved from slavery to liberty. They moved from poverty to abundance. They moved from being no people to becoming a company of kings and priests of the Most High. Father, therefore, today, Transformation Assembly, we move from every evil. We move from every control of darkness. We move from poverty. We move from penury. We move from just being under 200 people. We move from it and we move into abundance. Oh yes, we travel today by the power in the blood of Jesus from poverty to abundance, from sickness to health, by the power in the blood of Jesus, from poverty of mind to abundant wisdom and understanding that comes from the Holy Spirit. We move from no marriages in the family to being a family that is filled with marriages and children. We move from a family that is made with problems to a family that is filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. For the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We move, we move, we migrate out of evil to good. We move from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Come on, declare it, declare it, declare it. We move from every evil influence to what is by the kingdom of the most high. Shakatala brande de bosoba, ikatala baba ya kapa kapu brande de bosoba. Reproche kama kase kete brani mayange. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. By the power in the blood of Jesus, we move from every evil influence. We move, 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 we move. We will no more be held bound. We are no more captives of the enemy. We move into liberty. For if Jesus has set us free, we 
shall be free indeed. We move into liberty, into the liberty of the Son.
consume all that side of time. Allow to the powers of darkness to overcome me. Pray that prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus. The time allotted to my enemies to rule me. The time allotted to my adversary to overcome me is hereby cancelled by the power in the blood of Jesus. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. The scripture says, I shall decree a thing and it shall be established. The scripture says, I shall decree a thing and it shall be established. In fact, the scripture says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every mouth rising against us, we are right to condemn. And it is our liberty. It is the liberty given to us by the most high. That we have right to condemn. Therefore, right now, the time allotted to the enemy, but my soul, my destiny, the time allotted to the adversary to overcome me, to win me, to rule me. I decree that that time comes to an end immediately in the name of Jesus. Immediately in the name of Jesus. Immediately I command that time to end. I command that time to relax. I command that time to relax. I command that time. The time given to the enemy to rule any family here. I command it to elapse right now. The time given to the enemy to rule our children. I command it to elapse. The time given to the enemy to rule our families. I command it to elapse. Therefore, let goodness and mercy begin to spring up in our families. Let goodness and mercy begin to spring up in our families. Let there be marriages. Let there be births. Let there be children being born. Let the children be children that shall be obedient to their parents. Let marriages be healthy. Let the bodies be healthy. Let the body of men and women be healthy. Let the works of our hands prosper. Let our lives be protected. The time allotted to our enemy can no more be allowed. It can no more be allowed. It can no more be allowed. Our families will no more suffer. Under the affliction of any other enemy. By the blood of Jesus.